Now, an Emeritus News Brief, I'm Lynn Houston. The economy is losing fewer jobs than it was last spring, but analysts say it's just another indication of a jobless recovery. The August unemployment figures from the Department of Labor show 216,000 jobs were lost last month, pushing the nation's unemployment rate up to 9.7 percent, which is two-tenths of a percent higher than analysts had expected. But the total number of unemployed persons, those from self-employed businesses and other job losses who qualified for unemployment, actually rose 466,000 to 14.9 million total current unemployed. In relative terms, that's more than the combined population of New York, Chicago, and Los Angeles. During an interview with CNBC, White House economic advisor Christina Romer says that if it were not for the stimulus plan, the situation would have been much worse. Uh, one question, Eric Kanner, obviously Republican from Virginia, said this week there's going to be $400 billion of stimulus money you haven't spent by the end of the year. We should take that money and redirect it to deficit reduction. Now, if the economy continues to improve, let's say we get that positive uh, month of jobs growth by the end of the year, would you even consider that? I think that would be just a terribly misguided and short-sighted uh, approach. You know, the reason that the economy is uh, starting to recover, the reason that we're seeing moderating job loss is precisely because of the recovery actions that have been taken. I think any forecaster just about that you talk to will tell you that the Recovery Act alone is adding somewhere between two and three percentage points to real GDP growth. You take that away before the private sector is ready to step back in, you will go right back down. It is, um, it is incredibly important that the uh, policies that we've been put in place get carried through to their end because they are working. And the Labor Department's report also showed that the number of discouraged workers who have withdrawn from the labor force is now more than 758,000, which is double that of last year at this time. More on the Emeritus News employment page. Also, a story about unemployment among workers age 55 and older reaching the highest percentage since 1961. A survey from the Pew Research Center says that those 55 and older who have been forced from the job market and are still searching for another job are increasing. And the participation rate of men in the labor force has dropped over the last 10 years, reaching the lowest percentage, 72 percent, since the Bureau of Labor Statistics began keeping such records in 1948. On the health reform beat, Emeritus News has learned from congressional sources proposals for insurance cooperatives to compete with the private sector appear the only hope for health insurance reform on Capitol Hill. Republicans refuse to support a public option run by the government to compete with the private sector. And most Republicans are opposed to co-ops as well. But Democrats think they can pass health reform with a co-op option, which will get some Republican support in both the House and the Senate without having to change the rules in the Senate in order to get the 60 votes needed to stop a Republican filibuster. President Obama is set to address the nation on Wednesday to provide more details of a plan that he hopes will be adopted. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi has said that no proposal without a public option will pass the House. But Democrats in the Senate say the public option won't pass in their chamber. A study of the swine flu outbreak in the Southern Hemisphere concludes the virus is much like the one that hit the U.S. earlier this year, meaning the virus has not radically changed, which will give vaccines a better chance of beating it. Still, Centers for Disease Control Director Dr. Thomas Frieden says there are no guarantees with a vaccine. I think the bottom line here is we will look very, very carefully to see whether there's a problem with this vaccine in terms of safety. We don't anticipate that there will be. It's produced in the same way the flu vaccine is produced each year. It's a new strain, just as we put new strains into the flu vaccine each year. And flu vaccination has a long-term, very good safety record with literally hundreds of millions of doses having been given. Dr. Frieden also confirmed the vaccine is on target for release next month. Federal officials want the public to understand that swine flu vaccines will not inoculate you against regular seasonal flu, that you'll need a vaccine for that virus as well if you want protection.
The National Women's Law Center has come up with solutions to the problem of dropout and pregnancy rates among Hispanic teenage females. A survey taken by the center found that 53% of Hispanic females get pregnant before age 20 and 41% don't graduate from high school on time. Among the center's solutions, more mentoring programs with Hispanic professionals to show young Hispanic females they can achieve more in life than gangs and poverty. The center offers this video testimony from a law college student, a one-time gang member and high school dropout. Fortunately for me, I had people who intervened. A major person in my life was my parole officer, and then later on, co-workers, all who convinced me that I was capable of more. I got my GED, I enrolled at the Community College of Southern Nevada. Now I'm a third-year law student. I am also running for a state assembly seat in the state of Nevada. The entire video and more on this story on the Emeritus News education page. And in another survey just released, low-wage workers are the most often shortchanged, literally. Fully, 26% of workers in a sampling of a survey were paid less than the legally required minimum wage in a previous work week. And 60% of the workers surveyed were underpaid by more than $1 an hour. The complete survey on the Emeritus News employment page. On the Emeritus News homepage, the Obama administration delivers on a promise to ease family travel restrictions to Cuba, but the administration also lifted some restrictions on trade to Cuba, which had not been discussed before. The latest on the biggest issues in public policy at EmeritusNews.com and live 24 hours, 7 days a week on the Emeritus News channel at Livestream.com. That's an Emeritus News Brief. I'm Lynn Houston.